Hey y'all, it's the old lady again in the old lady report. How y'all doing? I know that I promised y'all that I was going to do my next segment about ghost stories, but I decided to add that into my special Halloween video that I'll be working on. I try to always do something special for Halloween. So, Y'all be looking for that. And I thought tonight I would talk to y'all about how I feel about religion. Because I'm not talking much about that. Most people really don't talk that much about it unless it's on a channel that, that that's what they're focusing on is religion. So, and I've had to move inside in into the sunroom uh, because it's been chilly outside, and I've been doing my other videos out there, but I decided to move in here. I moved most of the plants in, and so I thought I'd move myself in too. Oh, yeah, I, I was raised uh, a Lutheran Christian, and, and I followed the upbringing that most Christians do in church. And as I got older, though, even before I was grown, I started questioning some things that was in the Bible. It, a lot of things just didn't sound logical to me. So I started a quest, and I had basically studied on some level all religions including the one with the God and the goddess. I have studied all of them just to know the essence of what they are. So I have also come to the conclusion that I am omni-religion. I believe some things of all the religions. Because there's some truth in everything. We just don't know how much. So I take my own gut feeling on how much I take away from any certain religion. It has to feel right. If it feels right in my heart, then I accept it to be right for me. It may be. You know, who knows until we pass on. I, I personally, personally do not feel that a creator, a God, is going to expect his creations to simply sit and worship him. I don't believe that. He created us to live so he can sit back and watch what we do. And we learn from our mistakes, of course. We're going to have to correct those mistakes. But I don't think he's sitting there expecting us to be, you know, hitting the church every day and praying. No. He wants you to respect him and love him. But I don't think he expects people to worship him. I really don't. That's a man, a man concept. That's in my opinion now. Uh, but like I said, I've studied all religions. One that I'm pretty well, well, the type of religion I'm drawn to, which is Asian religions, such as Hindu and Buddhism, because of their belief in reincarnation, the transmigration of our souls which mainly means reincarnation, that the soul never dies, that it will leave this earthly body after it's lived its lifetime. It's tried to subconsciously correct the things that it messed up in the other life, but we don't come here. We come here with feelings we can have a lot of feelings that draw us to certain situations and certain things that we don't know why. And I believe that is a, something drawing us from another life. 
and I also believe that uh, in a lot of occasions that souls can be born as a group. Say people that you've known in one life will be people that you know in this life. They'll have some connection in your life, depending on how much interaction they need to have with you in this life. Of course, you don't know, but the, have you ever wondered why when you meet certain people, you all of a sudden feel like, I've known this person forever, because you just connect that way. That's what I believe that is. And some people you can know for 20 years and have no connection. So it's just, it's something. And, and I think about those kind of things. So, uh, whenever I was studying all that, Oh, this was back in the 80s. And I went to a past life regressionist to be hypnotized and to discover a past life. It was so interesting how they did this. Once they actually put you under and I can remember all this, what she said, but your mind does exactly what they tell you to do. And she said to go to a cloud, and you're gonna sit on this fluffy cloud, and that dog's trying to get out. <laughs> uh, and a uh, nice fluffy. So the hypnotist would have you go up and sit on a nice fluffy cloud and look around and see all, everything down below. And then they tell you that you're going to step off the cloud and you're gonna float down slowly to the earth. And you're going to go back into a past life a life that you really enjoyed, a happy life. Okay, then what are you doing over there? I don't know, I think there's some kind of animal over here. We've, we've had a mouse in one of the flower pots back here. So, I don't know, those dogs keep running something. So, Maybe the mouse came out. I hope it don't run on me because I'm sitting on a pillow on this floor. Mm. Well, I finished telling you about that hypnosis thing. <laughs> it was fun. Well, they said, as soon as your feet touch the ground, to look down and look at your feet and take a mental note of what you were wearing. And then look up your legs to see, you know, what you're wearing, whether you're wearing pants or whether you're wearing a dress or whatever. You want to take a mental note of what you see. And then you look around where you are. And I was standing on a wooden sidewalk outside a store. And this was back, I'd say about the turn of the century or maybe the 1890s. And as I looked down, I could see black high button boots on and a long skirt but it had kind of a, a flare up at the bottom of it, just with maybe a sort of a little ruffle and something at, at the bottom. So it wasn't just straight, but it was very pretty. It was a light colored. I can't remember, I think it was white, but it may have been gray or something. I don't know, that's not important here. And then they say to, to walk towards home. Now this is hypnotist putting these things to do it, and once you start seeing it, 
then you make a mental note of what you're saying so that you can remember this when you wake up so you can talk to the hypnotist. And uh, I walked and we were going down, I was going down this street, it was dirt, and you could see uh, some store buildings and then, and then it went into residential houses, but it was always the, the dirt street. And the whole way, there was a child with me. She was blonde and had, had her hair in ringlets and bows in her hair. And it was a real cute dress and sort of high button boots too. But she was playing with a little dog. And the little dog was a little yappy, sort of a long haired dog. But it was one that's kind of just yap, 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 yap. And, and I could hear that yapping. And, and, and she was playing with the dog with a stick. And they played and done all that all the way home. And I was thinking, I just will never forget this yapping of this dog. And then they said to go into the house. Well, when I went into the house, I don't know what happened to the little girl and the dog. They just sort of vanished. And they instructed me to go into a room and visualize the room so that I could see it and describe it. So it was like a dining room, but I was looking at it from the end as you walk in, maybe through the double doors, and it was a long room that wasn't extremely wide, but it, it was fit real good with this long table that was down the center of this room. And it had a lace tablecloth on it and some kind of a centerpiece. I think it was a candelabra or something like that. And there was a... a chandelier that hung above but it was that kind that had all the prisms and stuff around it real pretty i guess it was a gasolier or something like that and then when i looked down towards the end there was big double windows there at the end and they had lace curtains that were blowing in the breeze and i looked to the side and there was the devil windows here and it had i guess the windows were all open and the lace curtains were just blowing. And it was just such a romantic feel. So then they say, go to a mirror. So I walked to the other end of the, the room and there was a big buffet and it had a big gilt mirror above it. And I looked into the mirror. And I didn't look anything like I look today, other than, you know, the length of my face. Uh, I was very pale, with kind of reddish auburn hair. Not bright red, but not auburn, sort of in the middle of a real good red hair. And it was curly. It was put up, of course, sort of like I wear my hair now. But it it was it was curly and, and it just sort of you know had around my face and hanging down. But it was all pulled up and pretty. And my neck was long and I had a high neck dress on. I think it was white, but it had the lace up here and stuff and the puffy sleeves. But my nose was was aquiline. I think it was sort of like Nicole Kidman, you know, that sort of a strong nose, but not a long nose and pale skin and blue eyes. I never thought about myself looking like that. But it felt natural when I looked into the mirror. Yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> so I do sort of believe in that sort of thing. Yeah, I've had several past life regressions into different lifetimes and in some of those I've sort of worked out some of the things that are going on in this life. It sort of come to mind that that's probably the reason for this or that in my life. So that's my little spiel on religion. I'm not, I don't go in deeply into anything. <laughs> but I, I do believe that we are here to grow. 
as a spirit or as a soul, as an entity, whatever you want to call it, uh, so that when you die that you can stay in heaven, you can stay near God. That's what our aim is, is to be able to grow to God and be able to stay there. But if there's things we need to learn, then we have to come back to be prepared, <laughs> try to learn from things. I, I also do not believe in hell. From what I understand, if for anything I've ever read, hell is not even mentioned in the Christian Bible. So, it is a concept of the church. <laughs> I don't believe in any of that. I do believe that everybody, everybody, even the most horrible criminal, will eventually, they, they probably will put their own, their own selves into a purgatory, somewhere where they will suffer for the things that, they've, that they have done, that they've actually done, not just, you know, a blanket thing, oh, you're going to hell because you've just been bad. No, there's things that you might have to learn that you really shouldn't have done this in this life. So you may have to think about that. You may put your own self in a psychological hell and not able to move on to that next stage of, you know, your soul growth. I do try. I do try. I don't always succeed, but I do honestly try to grow and be loving and accepting. There's certain things that I cannot. And I, I, I always say, you know, I, I think everybody should live their own truth and be be happy. But when it infringes on me, I ups, get upset over it. Because I don't agree with some things that go on. And, and I think it sort of infringes on the, the person, the kind of person I am. So I, I just sometimes cannot keep from saying ugly things. But I'm going to have to learn either that or I'll have to pay for it. Karma bite you in the butt. So I am trying. I am accepting that everybody has a right to be happy and do whatever they want to do. But just don't sell you like me. You're probably not as much of a bitch as I am. And that proves what a woman I am. I'm be a bitch. Depends on what you're, you're meaning for bitch. My man of a bitch is somebody that will bitch on you. Be a bitch. But some people, they, they take a bitch being a whore. I was never that kind of bitch. No. But I could be the other kind. If you push me. <laughs> I don't like people to push me in any way. No, I do not like confrontation. I do not like war of words. I don't like any of that shit. If things have gotten to that point, then it's time for friendships to end. It, I don't feel like I want to go into I don't think anything is worthy of that. I don't even like marriages where you've got to argue and carry on. I don't like that. I do not like it. It's not to say that I can't do it, because I have, but I was always pushed into it. That's right. And then I will have a conniption and my head will split down the middle and fire will come out. And that, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. So, Peppers wants to say hello.
<laughs> I'm standing out here with the kids. Okay, here comes brother boy. He wants to say hello to. <laughs> I've gone to the dogs. <laughs> but they have sweet little souls too. They do. I might have known them in a past life. I don't know. Were y'all bad to me and had to go back down to being dogs? I don't know. <laughs> That's one thing about the transmigration of souls. Uh, if you've studied anything from Dolores Cannon, she says that we all start, start as lower life form and work our way up after we've learned our lessons. So this means we've learned a good many lessons now. We might have been a monkey at one time. I love the monkeys. I love the monkey videos. Oh, I love them. So, hey, I could have been a monkey in the last life. I don't know. <laughs> all right, y'all, so... It's whatever feels right for anybody. I don't knock any religion, anything that feels right for you. Possibly that's where your soul is in its growth. Whatever religion or whatever you believe in, that's where your soul is right now. They don't knock anything, but don't think that anything it's totally 100% because nothing is. Always leave your mind open for the possibility. Okay. That's my little spell. And I'm hoping this week to, I've already started shooting my Halloween video. Uh, but I haven't finished it up. Now, if I'd have known that the baby wasn't coming today, I would have had plenty of time because this is going to require costuming and theatrical makeup and all that kind of stuff. And then the fact that I'm filming it alone and I have to do this around the baby. So, and Miss Jane don't like to have to sit her by herself sometimes because... Yeah, she's a constant. I love her dearly, but I can't shoot this video. And don't take me too awfully long, but I'm going to do it this week, I promise. As if anybody watching this gives a shit. 